right now, right this very moment, is the best moment, the best period in history of the universe to create a startup that will result in a unicorn company. Now is the moment to create money-making machine that will make you filthy, make me filthy, you, everybody, filthy rich. Why is now the moment? Well, I have two letters for you. A, I. Everyone wants everything to be artificial intelligence. People want to use it and investors want to invest in it. So all we need to do is create an extremely useful and very powerful solution that solves a real world problem using AI. Fortunately for you, I am about to tell you everything you need to know and do to become filthy, filthy rich. The first step is to create an MVP that will be just enough to attract seed investment. We'll make a very quick break to thank Cast AI for sponsoring this video. Cast AI is likely one of the best and fastest autoscalers on the market. It works with Kubernetes and apart from normal servers, it also supports GPU nodes. So those working with AI and ML are covered, very well covered. And if you want to save on your bills, it works with spot instances as well. It's a wide-reaching automation platform for Kubernetes that automates cost optimization and removes the need for you to manually fiddle with resources. Try it out for free. Now, let's get back to the video. The first thing we need when starting a company is an idea that will attract seed investment, that will attract the initial quantity of money. Now, to be clear, the idea alone is not going to cut it, we also need a minimum viable product or MVP that will demonstrate the idea's potential. The idea is clear, it's AI. Everyone wants to use it and everyone wants to invest in it. Now, that might be a bit too broad, so let's narrow it down a bit, just a tiny bit. Since Kubernetes is the second most popular thing right now, right after AI, we should combine the two. The only thing better than riding a hype is riding two hypes at the same time. So, the startup will be about using AI to help us with Kubernetes. What is the biggest problem with Kubernetes? Well, that's easy. It's complicated. So, we will build artificial intelligence that will simplify Kubernetes. More specifically, we will try to simplify debugging Kubernetes. After all, almost everyone is capable of doing something in Kubernetes. That's not the problem. The problem is what happens after we do something in Kubernetes. What happens when something goes wrong and we have no clue what's going on. So, the amazing idea that will end up with millions or billions in the bank account is to create an AI that will help us debug Kubernetes. Now, we do not need to build the whole thing right away. For now, the goal is to earn seed money. And for that, we need only an MVP. It needs to do just enough to demonstrate the idea's potential so that investors can give us a few million dollars, which we can use to hire a team of engineers that will build the actual product. So, let's do it. Let's build an MVP, the MVP. Let's start from the beginning. How do we find whether something is wrong in Kubernetes? We list the pods and check their statuses. In this case, both pods are failing. We can see that by the status column. All I know is that ready is good and everything else is bad. I have no idea what everything else means, but I do know that it is no bueno. Now, we need a bit more information. And given that I finished a whole day training with Kubernetes, I know that I can get events produced by a pod by executing kubectl describe. And there we go. It says that it was successfully assigned, that it started pulling the image, and then comes a bunch of warnings which no one told me about during the, that full day training. That does not matter anyways. I do not need to be a Kubernetes expert. I'll build a solution that will help me figure out what's wrong using AI. Now, I'm not really going to build an AI. That would be too complicated since I know nothing about AI either. And even if I would know something, that would take more time than I'm willing to spend just for a few million dollars in seed investment. So we will use ChatGPT. They, the folks behind it, did all the hard work for us, for everybody else. And I, as a real founder, will just take it and build my own empire on top of it. So let me copy the events open JetGPT in a browser, write, explain what's wrong with a Kubernetes pod that contains following events, 
paste the events and press the enter key. And there we go. ChatGPT explained what the issue is so that even someone who's only experienced with Kubernetes is a full day training, can understand what's wrong with it and fix it. To be clear, what you just saw was the exploration phase that aims to find the idea that will result in a unicorn company. The idea is clear, we'll build an application that will revolutionize the way we debug Kubernetes using AI. And now that we have the idea for the mighty startup, let's create the MVP. The goal of this MVP is not to build a product. That comes later. Right now, we do not have funding to do any serious work. To get the funding, you know, seed round, maybe modest couple of million dollars, we need to demonstrate the idea's potential. We need to build an MVP that will be just enough to convince investors that we are onto something. I mean, we are obviously onto something. Who wouldn't invest in an AI startup? Still, we need to demonstrate not only that we have a brilliant idea, but that we can execute it. So we need a minimum valuable product, not the final solution. And after a bit of research, I discovered that ChatGPT can be accessed through the OpenAI API. So let's try it out in the simplest possible way. And that means CURL with the URL authorization header and the payload that includes the question we want the AI, the, the AI, the artificial intelligence to answer. And there we go. I got the response from the AI. Now, the users of the future application probably do not want to use JSON, right? Or to see JSON. They want a human-friendly output. So let me repeat the same command, but with JQ to extract the answer. And there we go. So far, we demonstrated that we can extract events from Kubernetes and that we can ask the AI anything we want. The only thing missing is to wrap that into an application that people can use. And I already did that. So let's take a look at it. It is a shell script. It's an MVP, hey, not the final solution. So I did not want to spend too much time on it. However, since it might sound unprofessional to use shell scripts, I named it Awesome AI V010 without the typical .sh extension. That way the investors might think it is written in Go or even better in Rust or some other language that only those who know what they're doing use. So let's take a quick look at the code. It outputs a question, reads the answer, and then executes more or less the same CURL command we already saw. So let's execute it. Look at that. I can type a question like, is Kubernetes awesome in a question mark and get a response from artificial intelligence. The trick is not to reveal that it's a simple script that sends requests to ChatGPT and outputs answers. Oh, no, 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 no. We developed our own artificial intelligence that is capable of understanding anything, especially Kubernetes events. It's a proprietary technology that we developed in-house, and now you, dear seed investor, have an opportunity to invest in it, right? That would be the pitch. And let's face it, who wouldn't want to invest in such a company? Seed investment is guaranteed, and our bank account, my bank account, jumped from a few bucks to a few million dollars. But that's only the beginning. With the money in the bank, we can hire a team of engineers that will build the first iteration of the product and with it get Series A investment, which by my estimation should be at least, at least $20 million. It could be much more for such a valuable technology, but I am not a greedy person. Now we're starting a serious business. We cannot get away with only AI. We need to do the actual solution that is unique, useful and valuable. The company got the funding which I can use to hire engineers. However, I did say that I'm not greedy, but there is another aspect of me that I did not mention. I'm also cheap. That means that I can take someone from high school, pay a few hundred bucks and pocket the rest of the money, right? Actually, now that I said it aloud, I realize that I lied, I am greedy. The high schooler starts the investigation by exploring a few commands. We can store the namespace in a variable, we can retrieve the pods, we can store the name of the pod in a different variable, and so on and so forth. And now that we know which pod to investigate, we can retrieve the events and store them in yet another variable. Does it work? We can confirm that by outputting the variable. Events are there, and now we can construct the question as a combination of a static string plus the events. Next, the high schooler figured out that it should create a JSON file 
but since Jason does not like new lines and quotes and since he's a clever kid, he'll remove those. He learned about testing in school, so he will test whether it all works by outputting the generated message. It looks weird, but it's probably correct. Moving on. Next, he created a JSON template of sorts. And after that, he learned that he can use JQ to replace the values from the JSON that text as a template, so he'll pass the template to JQ and store the final result in a file. Ah. By now, he is fully test-driven developer, so he'll do another round of testing by taking a quick look at the final JSON. It looks good, all tests passed, and the last thing he needs to check is whether he can send that JSON payload to ChatGPT and get an answer about what's wrong with the pod. It works like a charm. The exploration phase is over and now comes the hard part. We need to convert all that into serious code. Right, serious code. Since the MVP was done as a shell script and he did not yet learn in school how to write code in other languages, he'll stick with shell. Finally, after a lot of work powered by Red Bull, he reached production ready release 1.0.0. So let's take a look at the code. Those are essentially the same commands we saw before, but now wrapped into a shell script named Awesome AI V1.0.0 so that it looks like it is a binary written in something else. Does it work? You bet it does. It is finding issues in pods, asking the proprietary AI for solutions and showing them to the user. This is now a serious product. It's combining AI with Kubernetes, two hottest areas of the software industry, and that certainly warrants a bigger investment, right? We are ready to raise additional capital in the next Series B round. We need more engineers, so $50 million should be enough for the next phase. I fly to San Francisco, say AI and Kubernetes a few times and money materializes, right? That's how it works. So let's build a serious product next. The work so far was just a preparation for the real thing. The next phase should be complete rewrite that will address performance and security of large enterprises that are showing interest in our product. I can't rely on a single high schooler anymore, right? I need a college student to help me out. And he or she needs to be a bit more experienced. So I hired a student. She knows Go. I would prefer Rust because that's what cool kids use, but Go should do, right? She spent a full day learning about Kubernetes and a few hours to write the code. Since I'm not only the CEO, but also the CTO of the company, it's up to me to review the code. So let's take a look at it. It uses Cobra to paste command arguments, which for now are limited to namespace. The main function retrieves all pods that are in the pending state, iterates through all of them, retrieves the events associated with each pod, and asks mighty AI for explanation of those events. Oh yeah, and it outputs the results in a human-friendly format, right? We did not yet automate the release process since we we're only a small company with around $50 million, minus 100 bucks for the high schooler and a thousand bucks for the college student and a Tesla Model S for me. I wanted to contribute towards making our planet Green. In any case, there are no sufficient funds to waste money on automation, so we did not do it yet. So I, the CTO, will build the binary and make it executable manually. Similarly, we did not yet automate tests either, so I will test it myself by executing the binary. And it works! The artificial intelligence is now helping us debug Kubernetes. With our amazing artificial intelligence and professionally written code of the application, we accomplished the impossible. We made Kubernetes easy. The release 2 is now ready. It is a major rewrite that could not happen without extra investment, but we need more. I need more. I'm building an empire, but I'm not yet ready for an IPO. Getting $100 million should be easy. So another flight to San Francisco, a few meetings, and there we go. The bank account is now at $150 million minus student expenses a Tesla and uh, two flight tickets, two tickets to San Francisco and back. Now it gets serious. I do not really need more engineers. I already have uh, two kids that do all the work, but they do need salespeople all over the planet. They work on a commission, so they're not a real expense. And in marketing, that can be done remote, so a cheaper country like Poland should do. Finally, I need influencers. 
They are expensive, but I can afford them now. Make it five, take five of them. All in all, my company now has two students acting as engineers, sales working on commission, marketing in Poland, and expensive influencers. There will be ups and downs, and it will eventually all come crashing down. IPO will not happen, but that's okay, as long as I can raise a couple of more rounds of investments. In a couple of years, there will be a new hype, but until that happens, I will uh, have more in my bank account than the budget of a small country.